This is a work of political and social commentary. The content of this video is not meant for children under the age of 13. Parental discretion is advised. So, what would you like to talk about? General Qasim Soleimani, the head of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard and the Quds Force, was killed by a U.S. airstrike in Baghdad a couple days ago. Along with him, several members of the Iraqi Popular Mobilization Forces were killed. The airstrike sparked incredulous outrage all over the world. Many are calling it an assassination, including elected U.S. officials like Bernie Sanders. Agnes Calamar, the special reporter on extrajudicial, summary, or arbitrary executions at the U.N. High Council for Refugees, declared that the strike violated the victims' human rights. Hillary Mann Leverett, who served on the National Security Council under George W. Bush, condemned the attack as flatly illegal. So did Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov and many others. Naturally, Iran condemned it too, going so far as to declare the strike an act of terrorism. Now that's an interesting choice of words, considering the facts of the situation. Let's start with Iran. This country's government is one of the most oppressive in the world today. The Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps is not a normal military organization. While most armies focus on external threats and disaster relief, the IRGC is responsible for defending the Islamic Revolution against foreign interference and what they call deviant movements. The closest parallels to their organization's activities and motivations are those of the Soviet Union's GRU or even the Gestapo of Nazi Germany. The IRGC is responsible for many of the worst human rights abuses existing in the world today, including the execution of homosexuals in Iran by throwing them off of buildings for the crime of being gay. Iran is under international sanction for their nuclear program, built in blatant violation of numerous UN charters, treaties, and other international law. Iran sits on top of some of the largest fossil fuel reserves in the world, maintaining a dominant position through their membership in and influence of OPEC. And when that isn't enough, they are fond of seizing oil tankers passing through the Strait of Hormuz, sabotaging ships and infrastructure belonging to fellow OPEC member nations and any Western country, and even launching a military strike on an oil refinery in Saudi Arabia. It's also considered the Quds Force. While the IRGC concentrates on internal threats, the Quds Force is responsible for running similar operations in other countries. The Quds Force is known to have supported operations by Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Palestinian Liberation Organization in Gaza and the West Bank, the Hezbe Wadat and Taliban insurgents in Afghanistan, the Supreme Council for Islamic Revolution in Iraq and the Mahdi Army, and the Syrian Special Forces. They even have ties to Al-Qaeda. They have been confirmed as the organizers of attacks and planned attacks against ambassadors and embassies all over the world, including the Quds Force is suspected to be the source of explosively formed projectile bombs used in Iraq, too. These bombs are shaped charge warheads which can more easily penetrate armored vehicles. They are not the sort of bombs that insurgents operating in small, hidden enclaves can easily manufacture in bulk. They are also the bombs which are responsible for up to 20% of the casualties inflicted on the U.S. and coalition forces during the U.S.-Iraq War. I've personally held trigger wires recovered from IEDs which were in place for use against my squad, which were plainly labeled product of Iran, despite the fact that Iraq under Saddam Hussein patently hated and fought a war against Iran for over 10 years, and the fact that there was no trade to support widespread existence of Iranian materials for casual use in the IEDs planted by Iraqi insurgents. Now, General Soleimani was the head of the Quds Force and the IRGC at the time of his death. He was meeting with Shiite militia leaders who were involved with the attempted siege of the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, 
which is why some of those leaders were killed in the same airstrike. Whether you think that the airstrike was an assassination or a legitimate military strike on the commander of a known terrorist organization, the fact is, he was no friend of the U.S. and other Western nations, and his hands were bloody. As for people freaking out that World War III just started, settle down. Iran may have a large military and a nuclear weapons development program, but as far as we know, they don't have nukes yet. Even if they did, they wouldn't use them based on the fact that the U.S. possesses a huge nuclear arsenal. Conventional U.S. forces could destroy Iran's military capabilities in short order. Iran knows this and limits their operations to covert attacks and provocative strikes so that they can justify their internal propaganda and maintain power. The chances that we just witnessed the start of World War III are very, very remote. Not that this is stopping the woke generation from crashing the Selective Service website with inquiries about being drafted. Okay, kids, listen carefully to a retired Army senior non-commissioned officer. The Department of Defense doesn't want to draft anyone. Drafting men for military service only occurs when sufficient volunteers aren't available and requires an act of Congress. In other words, only during a declared war or an undeclared war during which Congress has voted specifically to authorize a draft. Did anyone see or hear anything about such an act getting through Congress? Um, no. Just no. So calm down. Uncle Sam doesn't want you yet. If you are a male U.S. resident between ages 18 and 35, just make sure that you are registered, okay? The penalties for not registering are kind of serious. As for my female viewers out there, don't worry. You guys aren't subject to the draft. Now, if you want to change this to remove the errant sexism of only requiring male Americans to sign up for the Selective Service, then I suggest you contact your senator or representative and let them know that you would like for this to change. 